All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. All right, make sure you check out some of our sponsors. All right, GameStrat is the sideline replay system that we use. There will be a link in the description box down below. Difference USA, all right, ultimate striking machine. We have one set up in our weight room. Story of the season, which gives your kids a, a basically a memory of the entire season, so make sure you check out uh, the work that Story of the Season is doing. High and Tight, which is a training aid we're using with our running backs and skill players right now. Auditory device that beeps when you are holding the ball correctly. Defensive Coordinator One, which is an in-game app that allows you to make critical in-game adjustments all right, based on live in-game data. Just Play Football is the digital software tool that I use if I'm going to uh, go to uh, clinics, speak at clinics, or do webinars online. I use Just Play Sports. Baker Sports is the um, the outfitting store that we use, our local team store here for our players' gear and our coaches' gear. Uh, this shirt was done for this year's media day, so we appreciate everything Baker Sports does for us and local high school football. And then Dome Hats, which is the headwear sponsor. This is uh, one of my uh, Dome Hats established in 2005, one of my Dome Hats that they made for us. And then also we've got, for the pandemic, we've got our... Play Fast Mask that Dome Hats has made for us, so make sure with Dome Hats you check out all right, their website at www.domeheadwear.co. All right, so today I thought I'd take a look at, uh, we, are, we are making some changes on offense. We are going to uh, work a little bit more out of 11 personnel um, on offense, which is going to affect some of the things we do at, on defense, in, at least in camp, um, and some of the things that we've got leading up. We can start practice August 24th with helmets, so we are still in a summer conditioning install type uh, of deal right now, so we've got one week left of that, and then we can start practice with helmets on August 24th. So as we start practice with helmets, even though our, our, uh, our camp is going to be cut down probably uh, by a week and a half or so because our first game will be the third week of camp, but when we start in practice, one of the things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to be able to defend all right, our offense. So one of the things that we're going to have to look at okay is we are going to have to look at um, doing some things uh, a little bit differently now that our offense is going to be 11 personnel so one of the things that we are going to have to look at is going back to playing some more uh, even front stuff and some of our 425 stuff since they're going to be presenting uh, some three-man services and then I just want to give you from a quarters toolbox perspective some of the things that I'm going to be looking at on defense to figure out when we defend these sets how we have to look at it just from the quarters toolbox standpoint all right, so when you're talking about 11 personnel, all right, we are going to be doing some work with uh, some Y off stuff in 11 personnel with the Y hip in a tight end position. So it gives us a three-man surface, but it gives us the ability to travel him and insert him and do some th different things in the RPO world. All right, the concerning thing on defense is this now kind of creates that three-man surface that's a little bit different per se than that sniffer being... All right, inside the tackle box, in the box there. This creates some, some stretches, creates another gap almost, um, pretty much creates some double team potentials from there that you don't really get when that sniffer is in the box. And those are a lot of the, the reasons um, that we went to it on offense. He's a vertical threat immediately right away. Okay, so defensively, we've got to handle that a little bit differently. So we're going to be working on going back to some, uh, some 4 2 5 stuff originally. And on the back end, we base everything out of our quarters toolbox. So how is that going to affect us? Well, the first thing we have to understand is it's a two-by-two two set, so we need to declare where we want to set the free safety. Okay? So by rule, the passing strength of this formation would be here because the better receiving threats for the most part in almost every offense are going to be where the stand-ups are unless you've got a Gronk or maybe a Kittle or, or just a really special uh, Travis Kelsey a really special why here, most of the time the receiving threats are going to be more dangerous on this side. So that would be the passing strength. Okay. We choose in high school football, for me, when I start with my quarters toolbox, I choose versus 11 personnel 2x2 two two to start by playing quarters to the tight end three-man surface side and trying to play palms All right, back to the two-receiver side. Why do I start that way? Because I think the run game in high school is 90% of our concern, all right? And there just aren't enough teams that sit back there and throw the ball to the passing strength to make us think about wanting to potentially get, all right, uh, a, you know, a change in coverage or, or putting the strength, our free safety and the strength over to 
um, over to the twin side. And to be honest, in our quarters toolbox, if I put the free safety to that side, we would start in palms on that side anyways. We wouldn't start with a different coverage. So coverage perspectives wouldn't change. It's the bodies that are over there that would change a little bit. Okay, so when we do that, all right, we're going to be in quarters to this front side, which means our corner is going to be all of one except shallow cross and, and five-yard hitch. All right, some people call it a mod technique. All right, uh, man, on, I've, I've heard mod described 55 different ways, um, but it basically means man on deep routes or man on outside deep routes. Um, I've heard some people say, you know, uh, man only deep routes. I, I've heard it a bunch of different ways, but the bottom line is we're going to play every deep vertical outside route by the corner. Anything that is shallow or inside of five yards, we are going to zone the quarter and yell under China, all right, smash, whatever, whatever the terminology is we want to use. Right now we're using uh, smash terminology. If he's under on shallow cross, we yell under, under, all right. So our left safety is a D-gap flat force player. Okay, so our left safety is a D-gap run player, and he is a uh, flat wheel of two player. All right, so he's got a handle. If two goes to the flat, he's going to match that right away, and he's going to handle the wheel of two. All right, and then our Mike linebacker becomes a three vertical player, hook the curl player on that side. If three pushes and two pushes, he might have to match three to the flat. Okay, if three pushes and two's vertical, well, then the safety will pick up three to the flat. Free safety's playing, all right, our uh, tight end vertical with, with quarters rules. So... Um, if that tight, tight end is vertical, pass linebacker depth, he plays it man. If that tight end is underneath that first inside linebacker, so he's under the mic, we will rob post a curl of one. If that, if that uh, tight end or Y right there is to the flat, all right, underneath the linebacker level, okay, then we will also rob post a curl of one. The only thing we can do differently, depending on what the other team's trying to do, if we got an under-release, if they're a shallow cross team, and we got an under-release, we may be able to try and rob a dig from the backside, but general rules, all right, general rules and quarters for us, two to the flat or two under, we're going to rob post dig curl of one, two vertical, we're going to play two vertical, okay, to the backside, we're going to start, we're going to play palms, so what are the, some of the issues we're going to have right away playing palms, got to make sure we can play this B gap, so if this B gap gets too far removed, if we set the three technique to the three man surface, B gap gets too far removed for the will to walk out. We've got to cancel that B gap. Whether we post snap stun it or put that guy in a four eye, we've got to make some type of exchange call between the end and the will so that I can play my palms, all right, deal out here and take away that B gap. Sometimes we're going to want to do that anyways, okay? Sometimes we're going to want to do that anyways simply because of the issues that are created, all right, in the RPO game where they're going to try and make the will fold into the B gap and then throw the ball in the area where uh, the will is vacated, so sometimes we want to cancel that out anyway so the will can hold longer in the RPO game. All right? Three pushes, palms, weak side. The mic's got to push. He's a three dropper. And now technically to get four on three to the palm side, the mic's got to work to the side that three goes. Well, with the mic working to the palm side and no player inside immediately of two, we don't like that for underneath some spots. A lot of teams will push three weak, okay? And then this guy will come from back here and run a little check down on you and you don't have anybody there because... With three weak, all right, with three weak, the mic has to push that way to give you four on three in the passing game. So right away, three weak, and that push motion of three weak is going to give us some issues in this coverage. Okay, so if they're a team that is going to push three weak from the pistol, if they're a team that sets the back strong and three doesn't go weak, then I'm fine. If they're a pistol team or if the back sets himself weak, all right, then we need to either redeclare how we're going to set the free safety, okay, how we're going to set the free safety, okay, or we need to, to think about some other things in coverage. So what is the first adjustment we can make on the backside? All right, depending on where the ball is, all right, depending on where the ball is, we can go with a lock scenario here. And the lock scenario now makes us play, all right, man on one, man on two, man on three. So now when you get the back push weak, all right, the wheel can handle that, the mic can stay to the quarter side, and we're good to go. All right, so... If we have issues with teams that are doing that to us, if we ever want to play quarters to the backside, we will always, all right, tag quarters with lock in two by two sets, all right, so that we don't get into an issue of playing quarters to one side and palms to the other side. So if they're a pistol team where the back can go either way, we're probably going to tell our kids that it needs to be quarters with lock on the backside, all right, so quarters with lock on the backside. If the ball's into the boundary, could we possibly get away with? Playing some cover two over here. Yes, we could. If the ball, again, 
Into the boundary means it's into the short side of the field. Could we take that corner and put him there? All right, and take that safety and put him over the top? Again, short side. Yeah, I think we could. So that would be a game plan type deal. Let's just say, if the short side is twins into the boundary, we can get away with playing some cover two back there. But if the ball's in the middle of the field, we don't like cover two, so we got to play palms or lock. We know what the issue in palms is if they come out with a pistol back. So we just have to be able to understand how to alleviate that issue. If we still want to play quarters, then we can come out, all right, and say, all right, it's quarters here and it's locked back there. All right, it's quarters here and it's and it's locked back uh, to that side there. Okay, so again, that's just for us. There's going to be other people in their quarters toolbox that have different answers, and there's going to be people who say, well, coach, why can't you do this? There's several things you can do. I'm just telling you where we start and how I dictate what the problems are to my defensive kids so they understand how we want to set. All right, the next thing we'll look at is actually setting the free safety, all right, setting the free safety to the twin side. So by setting the free safety to the twin side, I now get those three DBs to the passing strength instead of the little linebacker over there. I can put the little linebacker back in the box a little bit, and if I want to, I can even pull the chain a little bit further since I have some extra bodies. But on the back side now, we're going to kind of be stuck, all right? And for us, this again goes into a lock scenario, all right? Unless the ball is short-sided, then maybe we can play cover two, and I'll explain to you why in a minute because some people are going to say just play quarters over there. I'll tell you why and how. All right, so for us, we can set the free safety over there in our quarters toolbox and make that the palm side to the passing strength. That's not really an issue. All right, if that was the passing strength, we'd feel really good about playing palms to that, feel really good about the run game over there. All right, probably end up in a lock scenario on the back side. Why? Because I'm short that down safety in quarters. Now, some people would say, hey, coach, you could go ahead and bump the wheel and bump the mic and play quarters to this side. Yes, you could if your mic understands how to be, all right, a flat wheel player. All right, so if you can hybrid train your mic to be a flat wheel player, because now this would become your three dropper or your match three vertical player in, in quarters, and if two was out and up, the mic linebacker would have to play that. Can you play it in some kind of abbreviated um, robber style scheme, or maybe you could play a crazy half type deal where the corner plays more off the half, he plays a robber technique, and he can still push the flat, so if you get wheel, it goes to the corner. Yes, I think you can, but for us, by rule, with the rules we teach, if we were to play quarters, we're going to play all of one, MOD, mod, except shallow cross and, and smash, or, un, or the, the hitch route, which means we're going to need somebody out there for us. Somebody has got to be swing deep of two. All right, and why do I say that to you? Because in our rules and quarters, Swing deep of two is a flat play. So when I don't have a down safety over there because I put the extra safety to the free safety side to the palms, somebody's got to be swing deep of two. So I would have to plus or pull my backers all the way over to get the mic to be swing deep of two to let us play quarters on this side. So I want everybody to see where the issues are and why the issues are. I don't want to teach the mic to be a swing, two, swing deep of two player. I don't like that matchup. The mic never does that in my defense, so I want to alleviate that. How do I alleviate that? Okay, I go to a situation where we go to our normal kind of home base, and we go to a lock call on the backside, which means if that tight end's got a block, we got to get involved. Now, if they're not using quarterback runs with a lead blocker from the backfield, Okay, and from the pistol, you're usually not going to get that. So in a pistol set, I don't feel as bad playing lock here because if the tight end is involved in a blocking scheme, they can't get an extra body to ISO or lead block. So it's all one-back type runs that are going to come to that tight end side. So I'm okay with it. All right, when I play lock, I'm always concerned about the run support. Now, I, I watch a lot of college teams do it. I see a lot of good high school teams do it where that safety comes down with a tight end blocks and, and they fit everything up. And technically, all right, if the tight end were to block, you've got that D-gap player and you've got that C-gap player, B-gap player, A-gap player. All right, if you wanted to pull a chain and, and change the front for whatever reason, if you wanted to bump and say, well, when that happens, we want to put, all right, the, uh, we want to put the one there and the three there. So we're going to bump the mic to there and the willy to there. You could do that. There's all different ways to alleviate the problems that you have. I think the biggest thing as a coach is just understand where your problems are. Okay, so again, for us, 
for us, we would get into a lock scenario. If we set the free safety to the twins, we would be locked to the backside, playing man-to-man, -man, which would question my run support a little bit. All right, And because I would question my run support, I would then think about, can we handle the run game to the tight end in this lock scenario? If you were somebody that could push your backers and play quarters to that side or an abbreviated version or different version of Robert to that side with a corner as a half, then go ahead and do it. I'm just kind of presenting to you in our quarters toolbox what gives us issues. Okay, so that would make us go to lock on the back side with palms on the front side. If we can stop the run, then I'm kind of okay with that. The only other choice, again, we have is short side or boundary side. I'm okay with playing cover two sometimes there where I put the left safety on the half with him up as a flat player, all right, and a force player in the run game because I feel okay run game-wise into the boundary. I feel okay that that corner can come up and be a D-gap player, and I think we can support some runs in cover two, okay? But again, the issue for us would be where are we going to put the free safety? What issues do we have if we play quarters and, and palms away? How do we alleviate that by going quarters and cover two or quarters and lock, usually for us, away? If we set the free safety to the passing strength, what quarters do we have back to the tight end boundary? So again, uh, we haven't played a ton of 11 personnel teams. We've played a few. Uh, we are now going to work on that on offense, so we've got to be able to defend it. So a couple things that just, I wanted to do a video to bring out some of the things that it causes when it's 11 personnel uh, as opposed to 20 personnel or 2 by 2 10 personnel. So obviously 20 personnel with two backs in the backfield inside the tackle box. You don't get 2 by 2 you get more 2 by one all right, with 20 personnel. And then 10 personnel, you don't get, uh, you don't get 2 by 2 usually attached with 10 personnel, so it's not something you have to deal with. So uh, installing camp for us, we've got to get to a little bit more of defending these with quarters and palms on the back side if the back is to the strong side. If the back is in the pistol or to the weak side, now we might have to go to quarters and lock because if he swings weak, we've got an issue. So now we've got to look at where the back is set, how we can call our coverages based on not only the receiving threats and the formation, but where the back is set. We are working as an offense out of the pistol. So right now for us, if we go quarters here, we probably got to lock that backside and then see if we can support runs out of those lock calls, okay, for us, all right, for us. And then when we do go back, if we jump back, if we jump back to any of our odd stuff, all right, and we've got the nose, the anchor, and the end there, the Louis, uh, Lion, Mike, and Ram, okay, we would have to jump into some of our lock stuff here, okay. So we would be quarters here, and we'd have to probably play lock here because our Mike is not a dropper. So if three were to push weak, that would make my Mike, all right, enter the coverage and push weak so that my lion can stay in quarters and have a guy underneath that tight end on those spot drops or those little spot routes, I'm sorry, coming inside. Those routes that in quarters and palms gave us an issue, well, now when we're in lock, they're not going to give us, all right, as much of an issue because my mic doesn't have to go anywhere because now in lock, I'm going to run with that, lock one, lock two, and now my mic can still play the spy technique on the cue or add on fourth rusher on the cue, and my lion can still be there. He won't have to play three vertical anymore, but he can play these inside routes that are hurting us when we are in quarters and pumps. So just wanted to do the video based on what we're trying to do on offense, where we're moving in the future, and how that's going to affect us on defense, how that might affect us playing a little bit more of our 4-2-5 or our even front package, and how it might affect our coverages. All right, hopefully you guys are back to playing football soon. Like I said, Florida, we are back August 24th, first day of practice uh, with helmets on. So last week, this week of install stuff and summer conditioning and training, and then we're in practice next week, play a game on September 11th. I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast Football, all right, and for me. Hopefully this video helps. As always, guys, you won't play well till you play fast. I'll see you next time.